So we're here at uh, B Plus B Smart Works. So who are you? So I'm Tim Tabner. I'm uh, the global product manager for our advanced IoT gateways uh, and also look after our, our wizard wireless sensor network products in, in EMEA. So WSN, right? Wireless yep. sensor network. Wireless that's that's going to be a big part of IoT. Uh, so is it already? Yes. Yeah, it's it's growing. There's already a lot of wireless sensor networks out there. Uh, the problem historically in industrial applications is that they've got a bad reputation for not being too reliable. And that's because of the way that current systems work, where essentially you have to select a channel they're going to run on, and that's the channel they're set to. RF conditions change because trucks drive by or a new piece of equipment's installed and the, the comms become unreliable. So what we're doing with Wizard is basically adding a, set, a level of time synchronization above the basic wireless meshing. That means that actually the network comes up at a point in time and it can select the best available channel at that point in time. That gives us a lot better availability of signal across the, across the network. In fact, we're getting 99.999% availability of signal, which is as good as a piece of wire. But obviously then with the benefit of dramatically reduced installation costs compared to putting in cabled systems. So it's quite important for the IoT that everything should just be uh... Uh, flip the switch on, uh, provisioning, or what it is that makes Wi-Fi very popular, or something. Uh, they were do you, you were doing a keynote, right? Uh, yeah, you were doing yeah, yeah. a speech. Yeah, so what yeah. are we talking about? So, so, so you're right about the provisioning. You know, one of the things we're working on very, very hard is something we're calling zero-touch provisioning. That's the notion that actually a user can take an unconfigured box and have an electrician wire it in on site. Uh, and when it's switched on, it calls into a central server and basically picks up the user account it's going to be installed in, picks up all of its configuration and, and all of its firmware and everything. So it's a key element. Um, what I was actually talking about in a lot of the keynotes is, is both the wireless sensor networks, but also an emerging paradigm we have for edge nodes, uh, which again overcomes one of the limitations that's existed for a long time. And that's namely that historically there's been a direct correlation between an edge node and a physical device. Problem with that is that it means day one of a project you've got to decide what interfaces, what level of processing power you need on the device. And of course what that leads to over a period of time that a system deployed is a continuous cycle of deploying a box, waiting for its capacity to be exceeded for whatever reason, taking that box out and replacing it with another one, so kind of a deploy, destroy, deploy cycle that carries on forever. We're bringing to market something based on a, a concept called Swarm Intelligence, where a, a physical edge device isn't any longer a single physical box, but in fact is a combination of, uh, of devices that cooperate and share their resources collaboratively. That means that the edge now can adapt and evolve as system requirements evolve, so it actually protects the investment much better than has been the case in the past, and also gives you a complete degree of future proof against the, uh, the emerging technologies. So when we look at all these, uh, 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 this hardware, what's inside? Is there an ARM processor? Um, so uh, there's basically a, a, a wireless, a wireless uh, radio that, that conforms to IEEE 15.4e. Uh, yeah, there's some process intelligence that then takes the sensor data, converts it into a format that crucially for the Internet of Things is already enriched. And what I mean by that, you know, historically with sensor data it's kind of coming through things like PLCs and that's giving you a, a, something that says PLC 31 register 40,003 has a value of 20,000. Well, you know, it's meaningless unless you understand precisely what that, that is. So with Wizard, actually, the Wizard devices are pre-configured or configured by users to actually transmit the temperature at a location is, sorry, okay, temperature at a location is uh, 23.5 degrees C. So actually now, users can semantically search for that without having to understand any of the complexities of what the Wizard sensor is and how that information is getting into the cloud. So, um what have you been doing with uh, IoT in the past? Uh, well, I've been involved with IoT since before it was called IoT. Um, actually, the first system that I remember installing that had all the characteristics of what we now call IoT, so enriched semantically searchable data, uh, data going from sensors and edge devices to multiple systems in a flexible way. Uh, I was involved in that 15, 16 years ago with Philips Pipeline and Chevron Pipeline, right at the birth of a protocol called MQTT, which is now one of the uh, 
main protocols that's used and standardized for IoT applications. So that was pipeline monitor, because pipeline is pretty long, Yeah. and you want to monitor the whole thing in the, from one control station somewhere? Yeah, it's, it's not so much that, because those sorts of systems already existed. You know, the pipeline control system would be there to control the pipeline, but happening in parallel with that, you'd find there was another system that was taking the flow meter data uh, and exporting that into the ERP system. In fact, we got involved with it because that wasn't happening. The way, actually, that bills used to get um, sent out by the pipeline company was once a month, a load of guys would get into 4x4 trucks, would drive down their port part of the pipeline, would go to all the flow meters, print out the tickets of all the transactions, put them into a fax machine to a data center where they'd get entered into the system, you know, and three months later a bill comes out and the user says, this is wrong. So what we were able to do by essentially inventing IoT technology was say, well, okay, we're already getting that information into our pipeline control system. We can make that available directly to the ERP system. So as a transaction happens electronically, that transaction goes straight through to ERT, ERP and it automatically creates the invoice. That then got expanded once we've got that in place to say, well, actually, there's also usable data from the pipeline control system that can go into our maintenance operations to help optimize those. So that's kind of how we got involved and what it was all about. It wasn't so much about monitoring geographically diverse stuff because people have been doing that for many years. It's been called SCADA. Um, the difference was doing it in a way that meant we could share the data amongst different enterprise systems flexibly. So uh, do you have the patents on IoT? And uh, the, you, Are you a big company making a lot of IoT already? Uh, I wish we had the patents on it. In fact, MQTT was a protocol that was invented by the company I worked for at the time, which wasn't BNB Smartworks and IBM. That's now been made open source and has been standardized across the community. So, no, we don't have any patents. Uh, for BNB, it's an area that we're moving into very rapidly. BNB's background is actually in connectivity, so in uh, media converters for fiber to ethernet on infrastructure, for cellular routers, for serial to ethernet converters, version um, and as, especially as part of its cellular router product range gradually they've been adding intelligence and adding intelligence so now a cellular router a is very functional but also is user program also users can put their own applications in to, to provide some local control or some local filtration what we're doing is building on that and adding more intelligence adding more user uh, flexibility for how they program it and adding this swarm intelligence piece which again as I say completely protects the investment that you make when you deploy a device. And uh, so what, what we're here, we're looking at what's coming out in and out of here, and so how about power, energy harvesting, batteries, are you considering all these things when you deploy? Okay, so, so the idea with the Wizard node is that it can be externally powered or it can power from internal batteries. So the internal batteries on it, the lifetime depends on how rapidly you're, you're sampling, but if you were sampling measurements once every 10 minutes, then on the internal batteries in here, this thing will run for something like two and a half years currently before we have to worry about changing them. Uh, getting the, the signals in from the transducers, uh, these aren't sensor systems, it's a, it's a wireless system for carrying sensor data, so we take completely standard uh, sensors that have been used in the industry for 20, 30, 40 years, you know, 40, 20 milliamp signals, thermocouples, closed contact digitals. They wire into the wizard systems locally to wherever, they, wherever they're located and then we take away the cost of wiring that back to some, infra some infrastructure points, some instrumentation cabinet or whatever. So uh, what do you think about IoT and uh, this conference and uh, what do you think? I think IoT is really interesting. There's a, a massive amount of hype around IoT um, and to an extent a self-fulfilling thing that, that IoT is almost an end that people talk about in their own rights. Um, and I think as an industry we've got to start getting a bit more real about it. You know, There isn't a CEO or a CFO that wakes up at three o'clock in the morning thinking my goodness what my company needs is, is a load of IoT. You know, They have business problems and need to solve those with a return on investment. Um, IoT and the technologies behind it give us a really good way of doing that that also brings along a whole load of added benefits. But we've got to start getting back to talking about the business basics of the return on investment on a problem before people start investing in IoT to any great scale. So what do you think about the Internet of Things Applications Europe, this conference? 
Yeah, How's it it's, been? It's, it's been it's been very good for us. Um, we it's been interesting with the mix that, that where it's coexisted with um, conferences for for other technologies. Um, when we came, we were a bit worried that that wasn't going to be right. We were worried that we were going to get um, you know, little or no interest from the other conference delegates. But actually, there's been some reasonable crossover, so it has been better than we expected, and yeah, been quite good.